Yeah, pleasure to be able to speak to you, particularly for this film. And I had so much fun watching it. And I can only imagine the fun you must have had making it. I'm guessing you were down in New Orleans shooting this thing and, and just having a good time down that way. Yeah, having the most amazing time, man. Like, New Orleans is an intoxicating city in its energy, you know? And um, Anna Lily is an intoxicating director in her energy, you know? And, and the script has such a so much life and vibrancy and it's so takes such unexpected and wild turns it's like it was always going to be like 5 a.m at Shangri-La in Glastonbury you know it was like a a journey that you're like you wake up from and you're like did that even happen like if we didn't have the movie I'd be like mm, I don't think that happened like that was in my imagination that was too crazy and I was sober the whole time I didn't even I didn't have a beer, I didn't have nothing in, in New Orleans, but I was intoxicated on 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 the vibes, man, on creativity and um the script and Anna Lily, man, and, and the cast. It was just it was it was so much fun. It's like the blueprint for um the kind of projects that I want to be a part of. Um but I think you could see I was having fun. I think you can tell. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I think intoxicating is a good word, actually, to almost to describe Fuzz, because I think when you see him, people might have initially these certain expectations of who he is and, and what he's about, but he subverts those in a big way as the film progresses. So do you find yourself now looking for projects like this where you can turn those audience expectations on their head with the characters that you play? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm aware that my physicality starts off on a note where, like, even if I'm playing it as a nice guy, it's like, you know, there's this kind of connotations to societal connotations to my, you know, to all of our looks, I suppose. Um, and, you know, I think a lot about this kind of, you know, subverting expectations. And I really try to not be too or so judgmental. Um, and judge books by their cover. You know, you have to give people a chance, man. And Fuzz is like, Fuzz is the golden ticket. <laughs> you know, you 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 turn away from him and you missed out. You know, he's the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland. You know, he exists outside of the human struggle. He He knows his, he know, he's the only person in this whole story who knows his place in this world, you know, and is at peace with it. You know, here is the rare, we meet a drug dealer who asks a girl, a girl to come to his car, who says like, man, you look so cool in your, in your straight jacket and then asks her for a kiss after he gives her cheesy crisps. Yeah. You know, on paper, there's alarm bells ringing. Hmm. But this is a man that we find out who, is that rare breed that will give without expecting in return, you know? And I hope I'm like that, but I don't even know. Like it got me thinking afterwards and even questioning, you know, myself and being like, damn, I need to be more like Fuzz, man. Like I really need to be more like Fuzz. Like I've, I've, it sounds kind of comedic and messed up, but I've never had a character I've played that I've left and been like, I need to be more like this person than Fuzz. Now that might may seem obvious when you think about like Officer Beale, uh, Officer um, whatever his name was in Beale Street, and you know mm. all of these bad guys. Obviously, I don't want to be like them. But nah, Fuzz was um, Fuzz was a special, a special, a special breed, man. Yeah, well, I, I completely agree, because as you said, you know, that that scene in the car, I, I'm as an audience member, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, is this going to take us to some, you know, really dark places? And as I said, it turns these expectations on, on its head. And so I, I'm curious, I know you're working with a, a great script from Anna Lily, but when you are part of creating a character like Fuzz, do you like to have a lot of input and bring some of your own ideas and experiences into, into the character? <laughs> I think it's impossible, you know, I think it's like, I think it's impossible to not bring yourself to it the way that I 
you know, the more I've gone on in my career, the more I've let go, the more I have let things happen, um, tried to control things less. So, like, I'm really on autopilot out there. You know, I fill myself up with all these influences and all these things and technical preparation. And then it's like, and it's kind of like when they say cut, I say, like, what happened? What did I do? And then the director says, do this more, do that more. And I go, all right, I'll try, but I might not. <laughs> and I go back out on autopilot and, you know, different things come out. So, yeah, I, I, I think, I don't know, in some ways, fuzz is like the accumulation of a lot of things I've been trying to do in acting, you know, and um, and I think like that he, he is such an unexpected character, but I think I had to bring parts of myself to make him even more fucked up and weird and, and um, surprising and lovely, hopefully. Yeah, well, absolutely. I, I think you just nailed it. And he is such a rich and interesting character. And, you know, again, he's he's quite unique in the way, in the way he talks, the, his mannerisms. So mm. I know you've got history in rap going back quite a while now, but were you able to pull from that world as well, thinking back to your time in that? To, to, was there any inspiration specifically you had or was it quite a natural process for you to just find who this guy was through the script? I did kind of base him... And he's cool on one of my best friends, Ebo. Um, you know, he was the coolest man I ever knew. And um, and so I really, you know, I saw, I saw E in in in, in fuzz and, and and tried to bring that through. You know, the street side of things is like. I always love it when I get characters like that and characters like Craig in um, Naked Singularity. You know, he's a Staten Island dude. So it was like, I'm like, yeah, I could do this. You know what I mean? I'm like, sometimes I see actors and I'm like, <laughs> I don't think you should have taken that role. I think just stick to the the private school, um, you know, archetypes or whatever. You know, not everyone, not everyone feels authentic, but with those guys, I'm like, yeah, let me at them. Um, let me bring bring something um, of me to it and of, of all of the interesting people that I know, because I know a lot of fuzzies. I know a lot of fuzzies. And, um, and yeah, he was an amalgamation of a lot of people I know. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. And mm. something I enjoyed about the film as well as your work, everyone's great in the movie, but Evan Witten, for, for such a young actor, what a fantastic performance. And I love that scene between the two of you in the car. Obviously, you mentioned being a drug dealer and he sort of calls mm. you out for that. And the response you give is just, just so great. So what, what was it like the two of you getting to work together? Because you have this great rapport back and forth. We were just like that in real life. Like we was just a cracking joke the whole time. And, you know, I'd be there with my New Orleans draw. And then they'd say cut and I'd start talking like this and just like, you know, we'd be taking the piss out of each other and, messing around and whenever there's kids on set I always mess around with them um I love working with kids and I'm a proper um yeah I'm a kid person um so I, 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 I yeah I always say to people I want to do a whole movie with with a kid and people go you're mad and I'm like you don't know me man I love kids so much and um yeah maybe when I do that movie um and you were interviewing me, I'll be like, yeah, they were right. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> but um, no, nah, working with Evan was amazing. And that scene in the car is definitely my favorite scene in the whole movie, man. And it just makes me laugh. He's like, so you're gonna go through security, then you gotta take your shoes off, then they're gonna do this. You know, it's, it's, it's really sweet. And then when he's in the mirror and he's just like looking in the mirror and he's going, he's going, if you look chill, you feel chill. If you look chill, you feel chill. And I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's it's really sweet, and um, he's got a good career ahead of him. He's he's done some other great work, so um, you know, he's proved that he's professional and reliable, and you know, I mean, how old is he's probably thirteen years old or something now? It's crazy. Um, he's got the world at his feet, and he's got nice parents as well, a good, lovely family. So um, yeah, I really hope he stays stays humble keeps working and that we get to work together again yeah my little dude 
<laughs> oh, such such a talent. And, you know, another part of obviously your story in the film, that bond with Mona Lisa, that it, it comes very quickly and feel, but never feels forced. It always feels very natural and, and very believable. Mm -hmm. So did you and Gian do a lot of work behind the scenes to, to work on that? Or, or did the two of you find that quite naturally on set together? No, we found that naturally, man. I didn't do any, we didn't do any work like off camera with anyone. Um, you know, I like it when set, there are some things you want to rehearse, especially technical things, but like, for, for for vibes, I like it when it's like in the Petri dish, you put the chemical, chemical and see what happens, even if it is horrible, then like, all right, well, let's start again and redo it with different variables. But um, yeah, it was, it was just a vibe, man. And it was like, I could believe that like fuzz, you know, it was true. It was like, I think we're soulmates. And it was like, you feel that? And it was like, you no, know, fuzz is a special dude, man. Fuzz is like Fuzz Fuzz is, is 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 enlightened, man. He's the Cheshire cat. You know, he's got the key to the city and the key to the key to the truth. So it shouldn't surprise us that he saw the truth in her. Now it, it does subvert us because he's got face tattoos and he sells drugs and drives that car, but maybe that's our judgment rather than um you know, him. Um, and I think that's what makes him so beautiful. You know, this this character that gives and doesn't expect to receive, but that look that looks so unique and fresh. And um I mean I, I wanna hang out with Fuzz. Like I wish he was here. Like I wish he was my friend. I wish he lived in, in Hackney in East London. <laughs> and um I wish I was more like him. Um maybe not the face tats. I might not wear the trousers, but um, yeah, like I really, really, really um, hold a place in my heart for Fuzz that. I hold a place in myself for all my characters. Like they're, they're, they're all, all of them will never leave me. It's too intimate the experience that we have together. But Fuzz is in my heart. He's actually like deep in my heart, different from all the other characters. Um, yeah. That's really awesome to hear because I, I really do think this was such a unexpected and, and a really fascinating role for you to take on. And as I said, I, I thought you did just amazingly. And another, just on another note, one, another one of my favorite performances of yours was in Deadpool as Ajax. And of course they announced this week, Hugh Jackman is going to be part of Deadpool yeah. 3. So would you, yeah. I know Ajax kind of met a bit of a grisly end, but in the comics, people do come back. He's obviously quite monstrous in those would you like to come back and maybe be part of that film if, if it were to come around to you? Listen, I, I've got all the comics where he comes back with the suit, with the things that fly out of them and the teeth and the eyes and everything. Yeah. And, you know, they end up, I think he ends up getting strangled in a river by Deadpool to really die um, at the bottom of River River. But, um, you know, these things are like, it was a privilege to be part of number one, dude. You know what I mean? It's like, I would be so happy to just leave it at what it is, the happiest thing ever, and just move on. And I'd be super happy to go back. You yeah. know, it's like, it's all it's all love and it's all good. Um, you, They've got a great team, you know, between Hugh, um, Ryan and Sean. Um, the director is like, they've got an incredible team, so... I'll be there in the first week with my popcorn and um, I'll just be there as a fan. You know, even now like, I can see all my Deadpool comics and statues and next to my Ninja Turtles and Mumra's and, you know, all of that. So, um, yeah, like I've been, I've been collecting Deadpool and X-Men since, and Wolverine specifically, since I was like 10 years old, you know, so... I'm a fan before anything. I wasn't even thinking about it like I would be in it. When I saw that news, I just said, that's great. <laughs> that's really great for all of us. Yeah, for sure. And it, I mean, six years now since that film came out and it resonated with people wow. in such a big way. You know, it's still talked about. Obviously, as you said, there's this excitement for the third one. I'm a big comic book fan myself. Cannot cannot wait for it. So are you, what's it like for you to have been part of that? What was, I guess, a very special movie? I mean, it's changed the genre, really. These R-rated comic book movies to even the point that Disney, who obviously now own Deadpool, they're making an R-rated Deadpool movie, which no one ever thought would happen. Mm. It must be quite special. 
it is, man. It really is it's like some goosebumps shit, you know. It's like it really is. Like I can't pretend or sugarcoat it or play it cool. Like it's actually, you know, the coolest shit ever. <laughs> it's like only if like Wu Tang had asked me to be their tenth member, or <laughs> Liverpool asked me to be their. Uh, kit man um i don't know what else i could do for them i probably couldn't even do that properly i'll bring in the oranges um but no it's like the coolest or splinter asked me to be one of the fifth turtle um <laughs> it, it is like it's just a, it's just little boy's dreams you know it's like literally i remember being at comic book fairs when i was like 11 years old and going to mega city and forbidden planet and you know It's, it was a big part of me growing up and I still read like like a massive, this is my reading list from uh, when I was in America. I just got back last week and it's like, I don't know if you can see, I've got like Reign of X, the Spawn Compendium. Oh, nice. I'm like deep into the Jeff Lemire stuff at the moment. Mm. And then Scum, Scumbag, Golden Brown Eye, that's funny. I don't know if you've read the Scumbag, it's on um, Image. Oh, it's some nice. Prop, it's some proper dark stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm deep in my comics, man. So, yeah, at some point it will be the right time to enter into some more comic book IP and, you know, hopefully something new even. Um, you know, new in every sense. And um, But we'll see. If not, then, like I said, I'll just be happy to be a fan in the cinema and a fan in, um, in the comic book stores because every city I go to, the first thing I do, is hit the comic book store. And, and I'm always like, I walk in, I smell the comics, I say, ah. yeah. and then I go up to the desk, I say, excuse me. And then they look up like, oh, someone wants to ask me a question. What do they want to ask you? I'm so <laughs> excited. And then I'm so I'm so excited to ask. And I always end up making friends with them and being in the shop for like an hour and geeking out and um, spending way too much money on comics and then having to come home and hide them and then sneak them into the shelf so my missus doesn't know that I'm spending so much money on comics. I can relate. I, I know. I, I feel your pain on that one. And Ed, it's always so great to talk to a fellow fan. Also great to talk to someone whose work I've admired for a long time. And this film, like I said, love you in Deadpool and all these other big movies. But to see you in a film like this, just steal the show. I loved what you did. And thank you so much for taking the time today to talk about that and, and to indulge a couple of my Deadpool questions as well. Thanks, dude. It means a lot, man. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time, man. Cheers. Thank you so much. Have a good nice one. Nice one, dude. See ya.